and anything you came to church with and make your way to the honor entrance. Remember the honor entrance behind where the pastors are seated as you share your testimony to the glory of God. Choir. Hallelujah. I can see him walking in my favor. I can see him fighting my battles. I can see him bringing in my miracles. He will do what he says he will do. He will do what he promised to do. I can see him. Hallelujah. Say, my God, hallelujah, my God is a miracle God, he will never fail, hallelujah, he will do, he will do, he will do, what he says he will do, let's celebrate him. I can see him. Celebrate his God. I can see him today. And I can see you, Jesus. You are bringing my healing. Hallelujah. Give him praise. He will do for me. Say it again. I can see him. Miracle working God. Miracle working God. Fighting. And I know. He will do what he promised to do. On his name, my God is a miracle God. Jesus, what you share a miracle God. You have never failed, Jesus. You will never, never change. He will do, he will do, he will do. Jesus, I can see you, Jesus. I can see you, Jesus. You are bringing my healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He will do it. Let's see it again. Say, I can see you, Jesus. I can see you, Jesus. Jesus, I can see you. He will do. Jehovah, you will do. So, I can see everything. Turning around, turning around. I can see everything. They are turning for my good. From healing to. Come on. From sickness to health, I'm turning around. Jesus, you are turning. You're turning everything around. I can see everything. Turning around, turning around, oh. hey. everything is turning around for my good. 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 I can see everything there. turning around, turning around. Jesus, you are turning it to run. You are over Tony, over Tony, and it's my turn today. Somebody say, I can see everything. It's turning around, though. It's turning around. You are healing. 
enemy today everything is stunning you are setting me free everything is stunning one more time say i can see everything turning around turning around for my hallelujah Give Jesus a big hand and please take your seat. It's my new dawn era. We shall be calling ourselves to worship from the book of Psalms, chapter 126. Psalms, chapter 126, we read responsively. I read verse 1, you read the next. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Can we take verse 2 again? The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Verse 4. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Together, verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You are welcome. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. It is my new dawn era. Let us listen attentively to the following faith tabernacle announcements. Number one, Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the ongoing operation by all means is already yielding great results to the glory of God. As the Lord lives, this church shall be minimum three times its average Sunday attendance of 2017 on or before October 7, 2018. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Be reminded that towards the full delivery of the church growth agenda for the year, every winner has specific demands to fulfill in this prophetic season. Details are contained in the announcement bulletin, and this includes the requirement for everyone to bring at least one additional soul to church every Sunday, all through this prophetic season. Number two. Operation by all means gospel rate continues this week. Everyone on the go for Christ is required to carry on with their soul winning endeavors, both as individuals and as soul winning partnerships from their respective places, on their way to work, during break time at work, and on their way back from work to their neighborhood, bus park, motorbike and tricycle parks, ATM locations, on the streets, under the bridge, ATC. Please refer to the announcement bulletin for further details. Number three, praise the Lord. Our operation by all means prayer rate continues this week. The special prayer session for the full delivery of operation by all means, tagged prayer rate, specifically targets all our senior citizens, retirees, housewives, nursing mothers on maternity leave, those on their annual leaves, and those on the line for miracle jobs. Those in the listed category are required to take advantage of this platform as their own kingdom advancement endeavors that will bring them into favor with God. Be reminded... Prayer rate holds across all our WSF district centers, including Youth Chapel here in Canaan land. Every one of us shall have a great story to tell as a result of our dedication in this operation. Time, 8 to 10 a.m. and 6 to 7 p.m. respectively. Number four, praise the Lord. The church has opened follow-up outreach offices in all WSF provincial centers to support our personal and partnership follow-up efforts. We are therefore required to submit a copy of our list of converts, their phone numbers and email addresses 
from the ongoing operation on daily basis for central follow-up purposes. Number five, praise the Lord. To ease the flow of traffic in this great gathering season, we are all reminded to take advantage of the various newly paved routes from Lagos to Ota. Specific routes are as contained with the announcement bulletin. Number six, praise the Lord. For any of our first-time worshipers who may not know how to get back to the departure bus park, please ask any of our tagged officials around you, such as protocol, ushers, hospitality, crowd control unit, security for any assistance. You may also go to any one of the entrances of the church or the overflow tents, and you are sure to find any of these officials who will be more than available to assist you. Number seven, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. We must all take advantage of this platform for our spiritual edification. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number eight, Midweek Communion Service Hold this Wednesday both here in Canaan land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time, 6 p.m. Number nine, good news. Five intending couples wed this weekend. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayer and share in their joy. Time, 11 a.m. And lastly, number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 23rd of September, 2018. Hallelujah. It is testimony time. It is testimony time. Please, if you hear your name, come forward to share your testimony. Mrs. Efe, Efe Tobori Umukoro. Mrs. Efe Umukoro. And also, Pastor Akban Ruben Ugbedoju. Pastor Akban Ruben Ugbedoju. Let's continue with the announcement. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 23rd of September, 2018, shall be our covenant day of fruitfulness. Everyone called barren is required to come along with their desired baby items for prophetic blessings that will turn them to fathers and mothers of nations. In the same vein, every barren business, career, and vocation shall blossom again under the same prophetic blessings. Come expecting definite encounters with God in this prophetic service. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Testimony time. Please come forward quickly to share your testimony with God's people, starting with your name. My name, my name is S.A. Fitobare Mukoro. God brought my mother back after she was missing for about seven months. That's 199 days. About 11, about 11 years ago, my mother was involved in an accident which left 13 people dead, and five of them survived with various degrees of injury. So she had brain injury which resulted in dementia. We have taken her to various hospitals for treatment, no proper improvement. So we decided to bring her to Shiloh 2017 for God to perfect her health condition. She was still with us here in Lagos in February 25th this year when she left the house. The whole cell group went to search for her. Our zone at Ojota and other pastors were not left out. We are praying for her safe return. We notified the police and other Lagos state agency. But I thank God I came to Kenya land and met with Papa after I broke the process. Papa said I should go home and rejoice that I will find her. We held on to that world for months in sleepless night. My husband and I turned our sleepless night to pray in kingdom advancement prayer. To God be the glory, September 11th, last week here on Tuesday, 2018, a friend saw her at Maryland 
and called us to pick her home. To God alone be all the glory. Hallelujah. Brought her back to life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Mama. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Please come forward quickly. Praise the Lord. It's my new dawn era. And so it's mine. My name is Pastor Akparuben Ubedojo. I have come to return all the glory to the territory taking God. When God's servant declared the mind of God concerning the taking of our territories and he explained what and what entails our territories, including our family members, thank God today the story is different. Over 10 years ago, I remember when I was in school, my brother would call me to his own school and for me to participate in their fellowship program. But after he was true, we lost him to the devil. But I said, no, this is my blood. The devil cannot snatch him. We lost him to the occult. And I kept engaging the blood and the name of the God of this commission and enforcing my faith in the prophetic word that whatever the devil takes from you, you can take it back. Since 2007. And then suddenly I remember after I graduated, I was with him. And then I was thrown out. But God told me he's not the one, some influence. When we discovered, I put it as my prayer request, Shiloh request. This year, January, when Operation Take Your Charity was declared, I said, God, you will restore my brother. You will save me. And then God saved him. He was one of those that used to criticize this commission, God's servant. But today he's in church with me. Jesus saved him, restored him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please listen attentively to the following documented ones. Hallelujah. Number one, delivered from stroke through the anointing oil. I was paralyzed on one side of my body. When I went to see the doctor, he said that I suffered from stroke. Some members of this church invited me for a program. Initially, I told them that my wife was already a member, so I wouldn't come. Later, I went to meet them at the gate and told them I had changed my mind and that I would come. The day I came was an anointing service, and Bishop Oedeko blessed the anointing all. He said that if there was any sickness that anyone came with, such persons would not return with them. I believed those words, and I took the anointing oil. When I got home, I wanted to take my drugs, but my wife told me not to. Instead, she told me to take the anointing oil. I did it. To God be the glory. The next morning, I realized that I was no longer paralyzed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make it bigger for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Testifier is Laba Tony. And finally, from grass to grace. Sucks. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put your hands together. You've been the next testifier. Give Jesus a big hand every morning. Hallelujah. It is my new dawn era. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet very quickly wherever you are. Rise on your feet. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise everywhere. It's worthy of praise. It's worthy of glory. Please remain standing in God's presence. Remain standing in God's presence. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. Also, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive your copy, you may please take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive your copy, be seated and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome. I want to welcome you this afternoon on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo, I want you to know that you have come today to a mountain of God and a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, 
the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Lot was with Abraham, and the blessing on Abraham began to manifest on Lot. You have come today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will manifest upon your life. You have come to this company of testifiers. The testimonies of Jesus here will become your experience. You have come to this breakthrough company. Breakthrough shall become your identity in the name of Jesus Christ. However, in order to enjoy the blessings that flow upon this mountain, you must be planted and rooted. The Bible says those who are planted in God's house, they will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you is set to down here. Engage every word that comes from this altar in teachings, instructions, and prophetic directions. And as you put God's word to work, his word will work wonders in every department of your life. And like God did for Isaac in scriptures, who engaged with for a year, and within that time, God so blessed him that his testimony became the envy of the entire nation. For you also, as you engage with God for a year unbroken, dedicated, within that space of time, God will dramatically change your story until your testimony becomes the envy of many in the name of Jesus. One more time, all our first-time worshipers, rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you have brought by your mighty hand. You brought them for a blessing, and therefore we declare them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they left as a concern, Father, turn it to a testimony. And any one of them yet to be saved, we declare today as the day of their salvation. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Ensure your forms are clearly completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome, and God richly bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. In this service, it is offering time. If you have not already done so, please package your tithes, your offerings, and any other financial obligation you have towards the Lord. And as you do that, I'd like for us to have the scripture behind our, behind our mind. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, it said, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. This seed time will produce for you harvest time. In the name of Jesus. If you are done, please rise to your feet. Lift up your offerings, your tithes, and speak to the Lord. Present your petition to him. If you are paying, if you are tithing, place a demand on Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord grant you the petitions of your heart. For every title today, may your heaven be perpetually open. The devourer is rebuked for your sake. Every seed of effort shall yield fruits. All nations shall call you blessed. For everyone worshiping the Lord with their offerings, we declare every form of suffering terminated in your life. We declare you blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please take your seat. And we receive the ministry of the choir. We cast our seed as the choir minister.
for the Lion of Judah has prevailed over dead and failure to give a life. Oh, you're free, free indeed. Be of good shape. There is no need to weep again. For the Lion of Judah has prevailed. Destroy all the works of the evil one. Your 
Hallelujah. Shall we all lift up our two hands to heaven? The price has been fully paid. No more sorrows, no more pain. He came as our bailout agent from heaven. Get us out of the dungeon of sorrow, pains, sickness, disease, spares, and enchantments. Jesus came for you and for me. To give us life and life more abundantly. Would you celebrate him this morning, this afternoon? Celebrate him from the depth of your heart. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. He sent his word and it healed them. And the word delivered them out of all their destructions. Somebody's walking free from here. Yeah. Everything meant to destroy you will destroy the source from where it came. Yeah. Somebody's breaking forth into another realm today. Yeah. You are that individual. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Now, lift up your two hands. Ask God to send you his word today. Send me your word of transformation today. Send me your word of new beginning today. Open new doors to my life by your word today. Open new chapters to my life by your word today. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. When the word of Joseph came, he experienced a 360 degree turnaround. Somebody's word is coming today Amen. that will terminate every remaining struggle in your life. Amen. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me, and make a lonely heart. You shall find rest for your souls. Somebody must find that rest today. Yeah. For that one, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. So we enter into our rest by learning at his feet. Great peace have they whose mind is stayed on him, and nothing shall offend them. They are stable under all circumstances. Grace and peace multiplies by knowledge. May each one today find rest in any restless area that may be around their life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let whatever appears as a curse hanging over anyone's life be reverted supernaturally today. In Proverbs 26 and verse 2, the word of the Lord says, As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse costless shall not be. Every time things are not working according to the divine order that God has set for it, something must be wrong somewhere. In most cases, there are spares and enchantments working against the innocent people without knowing. The cause, costless, shall not be. Therefore, whatever is behind things not working according to order in anybody's life, I command them cost by the root today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is out of school but can't get a job. 
Someone gets a job today, he loses it tomorrow, and that first time, second time, third time, fourth time. Somebody's in a business, and once a while, there's some sign, then for a long time, nothing else is happening. Somebody's said to be married, no, nobody's coming around. Everything looks tight, all around. They said, but why? He said, an enemy has done this. Whatever the enemy has done against anybody's welfare here, I command them all reverted today. Every planting of the devil making life unbearable for anyone under the sound of my voice, I command those trees rooted out finally. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering and get seated. It's my new dawn era. We understand from scriptures that an encounter with the world is the mother of all miracles. An encounter with the world is the mother of all miracles. God said to Moses, thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. An encounter with the world is the mother of all miracles. What's the rod? That shall comfort a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Isaiah chapter 11, and verse 1 and 2. That rod is Jesus in a figure. And the beginning was the word, and the word was the God, and the word was God. The same became flesh and dwelt among us, and behold, his glory as that of the only begotten Son of God. So, the rod is Jesus. And Jesus is the living word. Now, thou shalt take this word in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Is it, it is by the word we receive and believe that we command the supernatural. The word we receive and believe is what we manifest, that manifests us to our word as the sons of God. As many as received him, to them gave you power to become or to manifest as sons of God with as many as believe on his name. Woo. So, every genuine encounter with the world puts the believer in command of signs and wonders. It's not about somebody praying, lay hand, lay head. That's okay. It's good for children. But you shall take this word in thy hand we are way thou shalt command signs. By the word of Matthew 8, 7, I have stayed in command of my state of health. It will be 40 years next year. That himself took my infirmity. Wow! All my sicknesses, so they are no longer with me. Yeah, I can never be sick. Can I tell you my source of supply? I asked the Lord when He called me, "Who pays me?" And I was saying, "Who pays me, Jesus?" The Crodiale Barota Pradiano Susa. I was searching scriptures. I was finding out. Then suddenly I found out that he appointed 70 others also. So I have an invisible appointment letter. Yes. And everyone so appointed is worthy of his wages. Look, 10, 1 and 7. Oh, I have an employer who owes me wages for my labor. That was it. I would rather die of hunger 
that knock on anybody's house. Excuse me, can you assist? You know I'm a man of God. Never once was I tempted to do it because it never existed. We command signs by the word. We command signs. Don't toy with the world. Those who toy with the world don't make much out of life. We command signs and wonders by the world. You know why we don't go about talking to people about project in church? No. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord. And the glory of this little house, greater than the former. He won't put that in the hand of a man in case the man runs away. <laughs> If he puts his project in the hand of a man and the man backslides and he goes to join a court, then his project is crushed. God does not put his agenda in my hand in case I say you are no longer my God. He holds it in his hand. So when he has a project, he releases it into the hands of the faithful. Can I hear you, amen? amen. The silver is his and the gold is his. And the glory of this little house shall be the former. So, wealth in the kingdom is an entrustment, yes. not an achievement. Yes, sir. He will not put in your hand beyond how much he can trust you. Mm. This God, I know him. I'll be hanging around him now. It will be 50 years in February. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He won't put anything in your hand that will chase you away from him. He won't. He won't. He won't. If you have not been faithful to your righteous mama, who shall commit to your trust the true riches? So he commits it to our trust. Okay, I'm doing that project. I'm passing this through you. He said, God, pass through me first. Say, no, I know you. I know you. I know how much I can pass through you. I know what I will pass through you today that won't be in church again. I know. God, I said, God knows. God knows what he will pass through me. He won't be here, sir. That he may lose me. He knows. So develop a heart for God that will make God trust you more and more. Amen. That's all you need. Amen. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. He will bless you, yes. But he, don't, he doesn't want to lose you. So you just have to maintain a spiritual balance. This life is gorgeous. Redemption beautifies and dignifies. May you never miss your portion. Amen. It is by the word we command signs and wonders. Remember? Is there no Bam in Gilead? Is there no vision there? That's our teaching team. The physician in Gilead is Jesus. He introduced himself in Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 and 13. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I'm the physician you have been waiting for. I deliver by mercy. I want you healed by my compassion. Praise God. Praise God. His prescription is the word, the word, the word. So when you lay hold on the word and you engage with it, it will deliver. Because whatever he says, he creates. Whatever God says, he creates. Whatever God says, he creates. Somebody's healing, somebody's deliverance, somebody's rescue will be fully delivered today. Amen. Amen. Don't get lost in the crowd. Be the Batman who's today. Who knows what he wants? I won't just let go. He will not mind the mockers. He will just go out for what, he's, what he desires. You must go all out today. You don't have to waste anymore. Everything is already accomplished. Awaiting delivery, which is possible only by your faith. You receive the word, you believe the word, and they deliver your portion. Somebody is going in today. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. 
Say with me, my body is redeemed to glorify God. Therefore, no one shall ask me again concerning my state in life, where is your God? Can I tell you this? Whatever area they have been asking, where is your God? My God will show up in your favor today. Yeah. We must recognize and understand our redemptive right of total health. and understand what he has provided to make it a reality. Today we look at an aspect that would set anybody free who can see it. You know, you only manifest as far as your eyes can see. Whatever you cannot see, God cannot make happen. He said to Abraham, lift up now your eyes and look northwards and southwards and eastward. Genesis 13, 14 and 15. For all the land where thou seest, unto you will I give it. All the land that you see, you have committed me to give it. Until you can see it, I cannot give it. I'm going to be showing you a picture of your sign for redemption. If you can see it, you have committed God to make it happen in your life. You have come, look. I got so fascinated growing up because we have taught many songs about heaven in the Sunday school class. Mysteriously, I started my primary school in the church building. Amen. They call it in the garden or something. But there. So much glorious songs about heaven that one day at the age of 10, I just looked, it looked like the family was touching down somewhere. So I told my childhood friend, I said, do you want to go to heaven? He said, yes. Because there is no weeping in heaven. See the way they are weeping here. <laughs> there is no sorrow in heaven. See how they are carrying their hand upon their head. He said, yes. I said, let's go. <laughs> so we started running out of crisis to heaven. We met a man on the way who was coming from the farm. He said, where are you going? He said, we are going to heaven. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so he started resisting us. And we said, you know, the devil is to stop anybody from going to heaven. This man must be a devil. It was a running battle. Glory to God. I mean, but heaven has come down to the earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus brought heaven down to the earth. Yes. Now, the kingdom of God is within us. Yes. Those who will make heaven to, tomorrow, they are in heaven now. They are in heaven now. It's a tell them the kingdom of God is nigh. Is coming, that's the meaning. Praise God. Now the kingdom of God has come. Christ in you, the hope of heavenly glory. So Christ is in you now. So whatever does not happen in the literal heaven is not permitted to happen in your life now. Is there sickness in heaven? No. no. Come and say, I'm free. I'm free. Are there causes in heaven? Generational causes? No. Hereditary causes? No. Diabolical causes? No. Satanic causes? No. What more? At redemption, you are raised up together with Christ and made to sit together with him in heavenly places. Come on now, where are you sitting now? Where are you sitting now? And it's far above all principalities and powers. All the realms of wickedness. Far above. My prayer is that the light coming your way today, you will hold them precious for life. 
very quickly. We saw from 1 Peter chapter 2, talking about newborn babes in Christ, talking about our redemptive status by redemption. And in verse 5 of it, he said, Ye also as lifeless stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He said, are ye coming as to a living stone, living stone, living stone, living stone. So Jesus is the living stone and we are called lively stones. He said, Jesus, by redemption, has turned us into living stones. Living stones. What does this connote? Do stones get sick? No. Do stones get oppressed? No. Do stones get afflicted with curses? No. From this day forward, Whatever has no power over stones. Stones don't get sick. No spirit of infirmity can possess a stone. Therefore, I decree that every assault on your air, on your life comes to an end finally today. In Matthew 21 and verse 42, Jesus speaking said, Did you never read in the scriptures this stone with the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the lost stone and it's marvelous in our eyes. So Jesus is this stone. Kuli, did he ever get sick? Oppressed by the devil? No. Afflicted by curses? No. In Mark chapter 12, verse 10, the same truth reverberated. And have you not read this scripture? This stone with the builders rejected, the same is become. The head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. And then you go down to Luke chapter 20 and verse 17. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone with the builders rejected. The same is become the head of the corner. Now, What's that saying? Out to the mouth of two or three scriptures, every two shall be established. Christ is not ashamed to call us brethren. The stone or the, a tree cannot be a brother of a stone. If he called us brethren, then we possess the same nature. We carry the same DNA. So if he came here as this stone, and we are his brethren, Hebrews 2 verse 11, then we must be living stones after his order. I 
not because stones don't get sick. Every trap and assault of sickness and disease on anyone's life under the sound of my voice is finally over today. Yeah. Amen. Don't joke with scriptures. The midst of scriptures come in simple terms. He said, I fear less by any means as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the gospel. Wait a minute. He took my infirmity, he bore my sickness. That's all I saw. And I've been living a super healthy life for 37, for 39 years. It will be 40 years next July. Sir, the months of winter. Yes, as simple as he took, yet I've gone to school. So what is took? You mean you don't know the meaning of took? So why, why are you moving about like somebody who has lost his mind? I say he took. Yes. You say you don't know the meaning? That's the meaning. He took. And carried it away and never returned it again. So, if he took, then it's no longer there. Yeah, I can never be sick. I declared that 39 years ago, 39 years after, I'm still singing this song. Glory to God. That is what the world does. No sickness, no disease, just papers. Get back to you, amen. You'll never see sickness Amen. or disease Amen. anymore Amen. in your life. Amen. When I'm 120, yes. as I saw it, yes. Moses' testimony will never be stronger than mine. Amen. Anything you see in that Bible yes. is available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And obtainable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let any devil confuse you about the simplicity of scriptures. That's where the power of God lies. Thank you, Jesus. Say with me, because stones don't get sick, I shall know not, I shall not know sickness anymore all the days of my life. Because stones don't get oppressed. They don't get inflicted with causes. From today, I'm free. No more assault on my health. No more oppression of the devil. I'm free at last. And I'm free forever. Now, the good news is nobody here is permitted to die of any form of sickness or disease. The truth is that at 120, if Jesus studies, your natural force shall not be abated. Yeah. Your eyes will not go dim. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Somebody excited by that life, put your hand together for Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Say with me, the battle over my health is finally over today. It's finally over today. Now today is our covenant, uh, it's a breaking generational causes service. To see generational causes broken, we must understand that we have been redeemed from all causes of life. Say with me, I have been redeemed from all causes of life. Christ has redeemed us from all causes of life by being a cause for us, for it is written, causes everyone that hanged upon the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might replace the cause of life in our life. That we might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hmm. The blessings of Abraham. Isaiah 51 and verse 1 to 3 tries to describe the blessing of Abraham. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah thee. 
Look unto the wrong from where your home is. Home. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort her waste places. He will turn her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be heard in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. Now that was a picture of Abrahamic blessing. Then another picture. He said to Abraham, come get thee out of thy country to a land I'll show you. And I will there make of you a great nation. And I will bless him. I'll bless you. I'll make thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. And I will bless them that bless thee. And him that causes thee, I will cause. So our redemption makes us uncausable. As your redemption makes you uncausable. Any devil that tries to curse you, God will curse them back. Amen. That's why they will forever be afraid to curse you. Amen. Amen. Every gang up against your well-being in life, against your destiny, anyone that dares it will see the wrath of God on their life. Therefore, be restful. You are an uncausable entity on the earth. Whosoever comes against this stone shall be broken to pieces. And upon whomsoever it falls, it will grind into powder. So you are a touch not entity on the earth. Yeah. Whosoever touches you touches the apple of God's eye. Yeah. He said, hold it. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, stop that nonsense. What king are you? Stop that nonsense. You touch him, I tear you. That's your new status. Yeah. Even the thought of launching an attack on you will bring calamity on your life. Yeah. Please understand that your redemption goes beyond the redemption of your soul. It covers the redemption of your life and destiny. He's not only the savior of your soul, he's your healer. He's your deliverer. Is your blesser. You know me, sir. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Number two, let's recognize and be conscious of the fact that redemption has repositioned us above the realm of crosses. You have been repositioned spiritually. To live above the realm of curses. Ephesians 2 6, He's raised us up together with Him, made us to stay together with Him in heavenly places. Chapter 1, verse 20 of Ephesians, and that's located far above all principalities. Ephesians 1 20. Far above, verse 21, all principalities and powers. Completely out of reach. By redemption, you are out of reach of all principality or power or might or dominion and every name that is named. You have been repositioned to live above the realm of curses and above the forces that inflict with curses. You are out of that realm completely. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Be conscious of your far above new level in redemption. For that reason, number three, generational causes 
generational causes do not have power over your life any longer. Come and say, I'm free. I'm free. If anyone be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? You have come under the blessing by redemption. So you have become uncausable. Beginning from now, no more effect of causes on any aspect of your life. Keys to breaking generational causes. Number one, be born again. Hebrews 2 verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The cause of untimely death, you have escaped from me today. The cause of struggling for survival is over in your life today. The cause of up and down around your life is finally over today. Every form of marital cause, marital spell, enchantment, business spell, career spell, whatever has kept you at one spot. In the name of Jesus the Christ, is finally over. Yeah. Number two, continue to walk by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians five seven. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is not a risk. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. First John 5, 4. Whatever is born of God overcometh the world. The wickedness of the world. And this is the victory that puts him over, even our faith. Above all, holding the shield of faith and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Ephesians 6, 6, 6, 16. To break every cross, generational, satanic, diabolical, occultic, to break them, just keep holding the shield of faith against every sign of a curse around your life. Standing by what God says and not what they say or what you feel. Faith is not a risk. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Number three, be committed to kingdom advancement and divorce. Be committed. Remain committed to kingdom advancement and divorce. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless thy bread and water. Kingdom stewardship is gateway to a world of blessings. And when God blesses, who can cause? To secure the blessing that avert causes, keep serving God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle. You'll be free for life. But I'm as free as air. There is no traceable fear in my being. My being is immune to fear. Amen. I've been face to face with that several times. Can I tell you this? Just keep serving God. Can I tell you what goes with you? You enjoy his presence. Serving his interest. You enjoy his presence. He that sent me is with me. 
My father has not left me alone because I do always what he sent me to do. Amen. Amen. They say, has somebody given him food to eat? He said, no. I have a meat to eat that you don't know about. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. John chapter 4, verse 33 and 34. What was he doing? Witnessing. Yes. Turning souls to the kingdom. What did he send him to do? To this end was I born. And for this cause came I to the world. To be a witness to the truth. John 18, 37. You can't be on his mission and miss his presence. And you can't have his presence and be defeated in life. If God be for you, who can be against you? Please join this chariot and don't get off it. Stay on this chariot. It's the cheapest way to live a most triumphant life. Get on this chariot and stay there. Don't get there officially. Get there spiritually. Get there spiritually. Don't get on this chariot officially. Get on it spiritually. Are you secure his presence that will always make the difference any day, any time, anywhere? Nobody ever gets defeated carrying God's presence. Yes, I go. Lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. His presence is eternally guaranteed getting on his mission. And they went and preached everywhere. God also walking with them. He goes with you when you are on his mission. What will bring the giant in you out is his presence. Though I walk through the valley of, the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. What made David confront Goliath was God's presence. God's presence was too thick. Goliath was an empty barrel. He didn't see anything, Goliath. The most high was standing by him. He said today, by my God, I'll bring you down. Did he not do it? Can I tell you this? That is the greatest asset on getting on God's mission is divine presence which is a seal of dominion any day, any time. Mm. The Lord was with Joseph. He became a Lord in the house of slavery. Can you see divine presence? He would decorate you. Yeah. I said, that would decorate you. Yeah. You have a slave in your house. He has no CV, no home address, no contact, no reference. <laughs> and you handed over your own estate to him. What happened? Divine presence. Divine presence. Where you will find yourself at the end of this operation, if you will care to engage with all your heart, with all your being, and with all you have, you'll be shedding tears of joy. Yeah. This same young man was in the prison, and the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and gave him favor. And he became an official of the prison where he was an inmate. He made official. Whatever was done in the prison, Joseph was the doer of it. Come on now. Hmm. Genesis 39, verse 21 and 22. Divine presence will mess up your mockers. Divine presence will mess up your mockers. If I don't know anything, sir, I know that God, with his majestic presence, is with me 24 hours. I, that I know. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So when you find unperturbed rest, it's a proof of divine presence. Unperturbed, unrestricted, unreserved rest. Absolute rest. Rest in your mind, rest in your spirit, rest in your body. Rest everywhere. That is an authentic proof of divine presence. He said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Exodus 33, you read down there from verse 13. My presence.
says, we go with you and I will give you rest. Please get involved. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom guarantees you his presence which gives you all and rest. As they entered into a covenant to serve God with all their heart, with all of their desire, he gave them rest round about. You are the next. Amen. You are the next. Yeah. I said you are the next in life. Yeah. You are the next in life. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. The battle is over. The battle over your life is over. The battle over your life is over. Remember when God blesses, no devil can reverse it. I've received the commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Numbers 23 verse 20. Whatever goes home with you today will never be reversed in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, today is a special monthly anointing service for all of our new members. Please know that the last, the third Sunday of every month is a special monthly anointing service. We must keep the oil fresh to keep the impact strong. My hair shall thou anoint, shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Psalm 92 verse 10. Then my eyes shall see my desire upon my enemies, and my ear shall hear my desire upon the wicked that sees up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow up like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. It's my rock and there's no righteousness in him. We must keep the oil fresh. May the fresh oil of today change your story forever. Yeah. What's in the oil? Say with me the spirit of the Lord. Say it loud. The louder you can. When David was anointed with oil, the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. 1 Samuel 16, 13. So the mystery in the oil is the indwelling presence of the Spirit of the Lord. What are his manifestations? We look at three of them. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 25, yet a little while, the indignation against your life shall cease. And God's wrath shall be vented on your enemies. For it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken off your shoulder, its yoke from off your neck, Amen. and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. So what is in the way? So it means the yoke destroying power of God. Everything choking your life is a yoke. Whatever is making life unbearable for you is a yoke. Whatever makes you cry behind closed door is a yoke. I decree right now that every yoke of the wicked choking your life in one area or another be destroyed finally. The yoke of generational causes is destroyed in your life today. The yoke of hereditary diseases is destroyed in your body today. The yoke of business spell, career spell, spell on your children, the yoke is destroyed today. Number two was in the oil. Say with me the healing power of God. Say it louder. The loudest you can. Jesus gave his disciples the oil. And they went up and preached every man where that man should repent. They cast out many devils. And anointed with oil many that were sick. And healed them. Mark chapter 6 verse 7. And then verse 12 and 13. The healing power of God resides in the oil. Mm. Is any sick among you? James 5, 14 and 15. 
Call upon the elders of the church and let them pray over him. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the spirit of the Lord in the oil shall raise him up. If he has committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. As this oil comes on your head, whatever remains as any form of sickness, disease, pain and aches, growth, name it, malfunctioning organs, terminal diseases, whatever remain in anyone's life as a plague of sickness and disease, pains and discomfort shall be destroyed from the root. What's in the oil finally? Say with me the breakthrough power of God. Let me hear you say it one more time. Louder you can. When Jesus returned, anointed with the Spirit of God, that was a supernatural breakthrough that attended to him. The eyes of all men were fixed on him. His fame went across all regions, across all the country. He just exploded. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. He's the same spirit. Ephesians 4, 4 and 5. He's one spirit. Same spirit. Same spirit. Now, as this oil comes on your hair, I decree inexplainable but undeniable order of breakthroughs in your life. Yeah. Every gang up of hair resisting your breaking forth, I command them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost came, and the apostles came under that fire. Man, they took over the whole Jerusalem in a matter of weeks. Matter. I mean, Bible history will tell you it's about four weeks. They, they swept over the whole. People in hiding just exploded into new realms of breakthroughs. No matter which corner you are now, as this oil comes on your head, my God will bring you to the limelight. <laughs> Inside the oil lies the breakthrough power of God. David was anointed in chapter 16 of 4 Samuel, and chapter 17, he brought Goliath down, became a national hero as a teenager. As what? A teenager. There are many young people here today. By this anointing, and tireless engagement in kingdom advancement and divorce, God will grant you inexplainable breakthroughs. Amen. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. You believe it? Let me hear your heart loud as in In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come and give the Lord praise, everyone. Has somebody found the road right now? Have you found the road to walk wonders with? Come and say with me, I have been redeemed as a living stone. Stones don't, get sick. Stones don't get sick. They don't get oppressed. They don't get, oppressed. They don't get afflicted. They don't get afflicted. I, am I am free. Forever. Forever. From every assault Forever. of the devil and, and his agents. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus, for my escape today. Escape. I am free at last. I am, I am free forever. Come and give the Lord praise. Amen. Can I tell you this? Jesus healed me of tuberculosis as a young believer. As a young believer. Nobody lay hands on me. When I found me being treated like a leper, I woke up and I saw all the students have removed their beds from me because of ceaseless cough. And I felt like a leper. I came out of that dormitory and I came to the back of the hostel and I said, Jesus, if it is true that you did all that you did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because I devoured them. I devoured them. When I got to know Jesus, the world was my food. The world, man, I could decide the whole chapter without opening the book. And I saw Jesus healing, setting free. No, 
No, no. Everything is true. You did not say, do it now in my life. That was the end of tuberculosis. Forever and ever. 49 years have come and gone. Forever and ever. When Jesus hears, it never returns. Yes, Forever and ever. You are too much running after we lay hands on you. When you receive the word, respond to the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Respond and walk into liberty. Yes, Lift up your right hand. If you have caught the word, come on now. Respond to the word. Respond to the word. Respond to the word you have caught. I have been redeemed a living stone. I'm not permitted to be a victim of sickness and disease. I cannot be inflicted with causes. I cannot be afflicted by the wicked. Jesus, the stone, never got afflicted. Never got inflicted. I share a common heritage with my Jesus. I share a common heritage with my Jesus. I am free today. And I'm free forever. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. If you are here this afternoon and you are not saved yet, this is your opportunity. Respond to the world. Until you are born of God, you are not licensed as an overcomer. You remain a struggler. Life without Jesus, life without Christ, is living in crisis. You want to be translated from the realm where causes prevail. You want to spend eternity with Christ at the end of a most triumphant, colorful life on the earth. You want to emerge as one of the overcomers in these hard times. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I pray with you before we administer the mercy of the oil. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody that wants to give his or life to Christ, please stand. This is your chance for a change of story. Please stand. God bless you as you stand. This is your chance, chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet and I pray with you right there where you are. In the name of Jesus. There are also people here. Please, all of us who are standing, move to the nearest aisle to where you are. Some church officials are there to help you out, filling out your card in a moment. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus today. You want to reconnect back to God. Please stand to your feet quickly. Stand to your feet quickly. I'll be praying for you at the same time. Everybody that wants to rededicate his or life to Jesus, please stand. Stand. This is your day. This is your chance for a change of story. Please stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Some people more are standing. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right now. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. And God bless us to do. All those who are standing, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. I'll be praying for you right there. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. All shouts would you make available to everyone in church two copies of the flyer for next Sunday service, Covenant Day of Fruitfulness. Somebody said, well, why are you always addressing issues? That's what you are sent to do. The hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. I saw people crying. God said to me, it was not so from the beginning. He sent me to wipe away the tears of humanity. So he keeps showing us which areas they are shedding tears on and asking us, address it. Then he confirms it. They do hear the testimony today of someone who brought three baby dresses and said, I'm looking up to you for triplet. He got quadruplet, but because he asked for triplet, whatever, one left and remained three. Three bouncing individuals. He just simply obeyed God. Come with baby items. You don't grow bigger than an instruction. In aviation, your destiny hangs on instruction. How will you comply? Not that I've been flying 50 years. Go and press the wrong button. <laughs> Just press one. Praise God. Amen. God forbid that you press a wrong button. A wrong button means on the way down. Amen. Swing low, swing child. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing child. They carry you for free. Instruction is the key. The 
key, the key to your triumph in life. So next Sunday, come with your baby items. You want two, come with two. You want three, come with three. That my daughter gave birth at 50. Yes. At what? 50. Come on, give the Lord praise. Yes. Amen. Now, wait a minute. She didn't have the time to tell all the stories. You know it can't be cheap. Yes, the story can't be cheap. Yes, the various efforts. Yes, the various spendings. Yes, but Jesus gave it to her for free. Somebody brought her. Bring somebody next Sunday. Somebody brought her into her liberty. Bring somebody next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody standing, will you bow your heads for prayers right now? Lift up your right hand. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again to set me free. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm washed by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I'm free today. I'm free at last. And I'm free forever. I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I bless you. In the name of Jesus, be blessed of the Lord. Grace has brought you into the kingdom today. You will never suffer disgrace anymore. Amen. I cover each of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. You have escaped, never to be trapped again. Amen. You will live a triumphant Christian life. Amen. You will make it through to heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When the last trumpet shall sound, if we are here, if Christ has not come, I pray that you will not miss your flight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. No going backward for any of you. Amen. You have seen the light, you never walk back into darkness anymore. In the name of Jesus. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Amen. Please make sure you submit your cards, your slips to the church officials. And I wait a call today from our outreach office. They will help you to locate which Believers Foundation class location is nearest to where you live. We have them in hundreds across Lagos and Nota. Be there for only two Mondays, and then you're empowered to live a triumphant Christian life. Shall we all rise, please? Please take up your bottles of oil for a blessing that will turn into the holy anointing oil. Once again, be reminded that the third Sunday of every month is our special monthly anointing service where we are required to come along with our bottle of oil so you can carry fresh oil and begin to make fresh impact in your journey. Hallelujah. Now, lift up those bottles, open them up. I declare the content of these bottles the holy anointing oil. Yeah. And I decree that every mystery that this oil carries will begin to answer in your life afresh. Yeah. I release the yoke destroying power of God in this oil upon your life. Yeah. Every yoke of generational causes is declared broken. Yeah. Every spell and enchantment upon anyone's family, the work of your hand, your business, your career, your vocation, whatever represents a siege of the wicked on any aspect of your life, I decree that by this yoke destroying power, they are destroyed forever. Yeah. I release upon your life today the healing power of God in this oil. Yeah. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I decree the release of the breakthrough power in this oil upon your life. Yeah. No more breakdowns in your journey. Yeah. 
You are breaking forth from here. And all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Please put a little of this oil on your fingertips. And straight to your forehead. I begin to appropriate your faith. To the prophetic word. The revelation you have called today. Now I'm a living stone. I'm not permitted to be tormented. I'm not permitted to be assaulted. I'm not permitted to be molested. I am free today and I'm free forever. Thank you, Jesus. I am free today and I'm free forever. Thank you, Jesus. Every yoke of general causes is broken in my life. Every spell and enchantment upon my life, my children, is declared destroyed today. My business, my career, destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. Engage in a cry of faith. The violent taken it by force. You are not permitted to return with any plague in your life today. You are not returning with them. Jesus. I believe in the healing power of the all. Heal my body. Heal my mind. Heal my system. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Whatever you have believed of the light that is shown to you, I decree full-blown manifestation of sin. The yoke of generational causes is broken off your life today. The yoke of space and enchantment, they are destroyed in your life today. They are destroyed in the life of your family. Amen. They are destroyed in the works of your hand. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They are destroyed over the life of your children. Amen. Over the life of your spouse. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. The siege over your life is finally over. The siege over your business, your career, your vocation is finally over. Yeah. I cause every sickness, every disease that may be befetting anyone here from the root, they dry up now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every terminal disease is terminated in anyone's life. Cancer is destroyed now. Sickle cell anemia is destroyed now. HIV AIDS is destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, from the mystery of Matthew 3, 11 and 12, we discover the Holy Ghost has the ministry of the fan and the fire. His mission is to thoroughly purge our system. We are the temples of the Holy Ghost. As we take the shot of the world, he goes in to purge our system. Unbelievable things have been happening. In the planning but undeniable. 1996, I served the oil in Jaws. And the woman got home and got to the toilet and excreted the long winding snake. Shouted, husband rushing, and they flushed the devil into the thing. He lifted his head, Ooh, I'm gone, I'm gone. Whatever may be tormenting anyone here, at the shot of this oil, they are forced out of your life. Someone here was drying up and drying up. And took a shot of the oil, went to the toilet, and excreted a live fish. Pro, 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 pro. 
That was the one draining the body of every virtue, every water. The man was choking. Jesus rescued him. Live fish inside the human body. A young man gave testimony this morning, came on stage, and vomited three black cowries. He hails from a Muslim background. The father is an imam. The mother is an Elijah. I mean, an imam with charms. Not just an ordinary imam. As he got to me, he knew, he said, you have taken something. You have taken something. That's the mystery in the kingdom. As you take this shot of oil, it will preserve all the organs of your body. Amen. He said, it will gather the grains into the Ghana and burn up the chaff with his unquenchable fire. Amen. You are not living here with any plague in your body. Amen. Amen. You are not living here with any plague in your life. Amen. Amen. All that believe in this mystery, Take a shot of this oil and glorify God. Cover your bottles. Lift up your two hands. It has happened. It has happened. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. Come on, begin to say after me, the siege is over. The siege is over. Say it a minute, say it a minute, and it's going out. It's going out. Every siege against your life is going out. It's going out. The siege is over.